my name is Baskar. I represent 4gmat.com. Today we are going to look at a question which is a data sufficiency question from the topic inequalities. Right. Uh, this question is interesting from the perspective that what we will be doing is one, we will solve this question. The second thing that we are going to do is to look at a framework to crack questions of this kind. Right. We will dive into the question right away and then like let's see what needs to be done there. Right. The question reads as follows, is x cube greater than x square? So this question primarily is asking us to compare the two different powers of x, x cube with x square and come up with an answer whether x cube is greater than x square. As with any DS question, this question, two statements follow this question. The first one is x is greater than 0 and the second one is x is less than 1. As with most DS questions as I have talked earlier, I would want you to spend enough time in understanding what this question is about. Invest time in the question state stem before you jump into the statements to answer the question. Right. I'm going to look at three questions that we're going to get clarity. And once you have clarity on those three questions is when we will look at the statements. The first of the questions is basically this. When is the data sufficient to this question? Right. This is an is question. As with any is question or does question, the data is sufficient if we are able to come up with an answer which is a definite yes or if the answer is a definite no. In both these instances, the data is sufficient. If I'm able to say yes, x cube is greater than x square, the data is sufficient. If I'm able to say no, x cube is not greater than x square, even then the data is sufficient. When is the data not sufficient? When I'm going to give an answer which is the equivalent of maybe or I'm saying that hey, I do not know. There are cases with this data. I can find an instance where x cube is greater than x square and I can find an instance where x cube is not greater than x square which is when the data is not sufficient, right? So I would write that for sake of convenience as a maybe. If it is yes or if it is no, data is sufficient. If it is a maybe, which is when the data is not sufficient. The second question which immediately follows this is basically this. So when will I say that the answer is yes and when will I say the answer is no to this question? And we'll start with that. Yes is pretty obvious. We're going to answer this question with an S when x cube is greater than x square. Right? That's quite evident. When will we answer this question with a no? There are two possibilities. The first one is very obvious, which is x cube is less than x square. The second one is what you need to be careful. You need to ensure that you capture this point, which is when x cube is equal to x square, even then the answer is going to be a no to this question. Because the question is, is x cube greater than x square? We have answered that x cube is equal to x square. In that case, it cannot be greater. So the answer is a no. I want you to just keep this in mind because more, there are quite a few people who have said that when x cube is equal to x square, the data is not sufficient. That's incorrect. If x cube is equal to x square, the answer is a no. Therefore, the data is sufficient. The last question, we'll just spend a few seconds on it, which is basically what data do we have about x and y? In all questions asked, if they say that x is an integer, then you have to factor in there. You don't have to look at anything which is not an integer. We have said y is a negative number, then you don't need to look at positive numbers at all. So keep these in mind. Check out if the question stem tells you something about what kind of a number x and y are. In this question, nothing is said. So x and y will take all values. It could be a minus 8.3. It could be a minus root 84 as much as it can be a 12. So what can it be? It can be the set of real numbers. So the entire spectrum is available to us to evaluate when it comes to this question for x and y. Now having done this, we looked at three questions. I'll quickly sum it up. We have understood when will we say that the data is sufficient. The second thing that we have answered is when is it an S, when is it a no. And the third thing is what do we know about these two numbers x and y. Right. Let's get into the statements. Right. The first statement says x is greater than 0. So essentially we know that x is a positive number. Now, one of the obvious and the most logical conclusions that anyone would come at this stage is plug in some values of x for x being greater than 0. Let's check out whether x cube is greater than x square. When you're plugging in values, have this as one umbrella condition. You can plug in values, right? I'm going to write it this way. Plug in values to prove insufficiency. You can plug in values and you can prove insufficiency. What I mean by that is, for x being greater than 0, look at a set of counter examples. One value which will tell you that x cube is greater than x square. 
and find, try and find out a second value which is a counter example which will also have the condition that x is greater than 0 but it will tell you that x cube is not greater than x square. So if I can find a set of counter examples that satisfy this condition then I can say statement 1 is not sufficient and I can move on. Conversely if I substitute few values for x which satisfy the condition that x is greater than 0 and I get a uniform answer which is either an S or a no then unfortunately you cannot decide that the data is sufficient because you would have tested with two or three numbers there might exist a fourth number which you would not have looked at for which it might be the contra answer. So sufficiency cannot be proved by substituting numbers by plugging in numbers insufficiency can be proved. So whenever you attempt to substitute numbers or plug in values have this as this thing I'll try and see if I can prove insufficiency with it. If it turns out to be sufficient then let's look at if there is some other logical explanation to what is happening. Is there a number properties explanation to why this is happening the way it's happening or can algebra come to our help? We'll come to that later on. My primary objective right now is to basically look for a counter example. Let me start when x is greater than 0 the obvious number that most of us come up with is something like x is equal to 2. Let me go with it. x is equal to 2, x cube is equal to 8, x square is equal to 4, x cube is greater than x square. The answer to the question is yes. So I found one instance where I have answered the question with an S. Now I have to look for another instance where x is greater than 0 and if I can come up with the converse, if I can say that x cube is not greater than x square with that set of numbers, then we can say that statement 1 is not sufficient, we can trash it. The obvious thing, I am looking for a good number which will either make x cube to be equal to x square or which will make x cube to be less than x square. One thing that immediately strikes all of us where x cube will be equal to x square is when x is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, obviously x cube is 1, x square is also 1, x cube is equal to x square. If you remember what we wrote, when all will we get an answer as a no? We will get an answer as a no when either x cube is less than x square or when x cube is equal to x square. Here we have x cube is equal to x square. So the answer to the question is no. So one set of values have given us that x cube is greater than x square and there is another set of value for which we have said x cube is not greater than x square. So essentially we have not come up with a uniform answer to come up with two different sets of answers. Therefore statement 1 is not sufficient. You can do wrong statement 1 as a possible answer. Right. We picked up two values, we got it this way. Now I want you to build a framework to tell you how to test questions of this kind. Right. A good exercise that you guys could actually do, I'll just write it down in the next slide and tell you what we're going to do. Try and see if you can compare x cube with x power 4 with x power 5 with x power 6 for the following four intervals. Right? It behaves differently in each of these four intervals. So anytime you get a data sufficiency question which is asking you to compare x cube with x square or x cube with x power 5, you need to see what all values you are going to plug in, those values should basically be one picked up from each one of these intervals. The intervals are as follows. This is structured approach to doing it. Right? X lies between minus infinity and minus 1. Right? These are negative numbers which are less than minus 1. In this interval, it behaves in one fashion. The x cubed, x power 4, x power 5, x power 6. If I try and write these in ascending order, you will find a pattern in this interval. A number to use to check is basically take something as easy as x is equal to minus 2 and check with us. The second interval to keep in mind is basically fractions, proper fractions which are negative. Numbers lying between minus 1 and 0. Right? I will obviously pick a number which is like something like x is equal to minus half. The third interval to keep in mind are basically proper fractions which lie between 0 and 1. Positive proper fractions. Right? 0 less than x less than 1. Try with x is equal to half for this particular case. And the fourth interval that you need to worry about or you have to test is basically numbers greater than 1. Right? So x lying between 1 and infinity. Try for something like x is equal to 2. So if there are four intervals that you need to worry about, these are those four intervals and it behaves differently in each of these things. Do this exercise and remember these intervals. Right? In addition to these four intervals, there are three border points if I can call it 
those three border points are basically what happens when x is equal to minus 1, what happens when x is equal to 0 and what happens when x is equal to 1. In addition to these four intervals, you need to also evaluate how these numbers behave in these three border points. Right? So keep this in mind, this is the structure, this is the framework that you need to remember from this question. There is something that you are going to learn from this question, it's basically these four intervals. Right? So we looked at the statement, we realized the statement is not sufficient. We looked at a structured way of approaching it and I also have given you an exercise to try out the ascending order of these four numbers in these intervals. Right? So now let's quickly sum up what we learned from statement 1. Statement 1 says that x is greater than 0. I have given you the intervals. So let's quickly look at what are those intervals. For us, because x is greater than 0, we don't need to look at the intervals which are less than 0. x lying between 0 and 1 is one interval we will have to evaluate. Take x is equal to half in this interval x cube will be less than x square, 1 by 8 is x cube, 1 by 4 is x square, 1 by 8 is less than 1 by 4. So the answer to the question is a no. The second one is a border line, border point, when x is equal to 1, when x is equal to 1, x cube is equal to 1, x square is equal to 1, both are equal. If both are equal, the answer is still a no. The third interval that we are going to look at is when x is greater than 1. When x is greater than 1, say x is equal to 2, x cube is 8, x square is 4, 8 is greater than 4. So the answer to this question is an S. So we got sometimes no and we got one set of interval for which it is an S. So we have not got a uniform answer. So the data is not sufficient. Statement 1 is not sufficient to answer this question. Right. <clears throat> Let's now dive into statement 2. We have now got an idea about what statement 1 is. When you have realized that statement 1 is not sufficient, again one th immediate thing that you can do is, I would immediately go on write saying that answer choices could not be A and B, which essentially takes away 40% of the possibilities. Now my answers are down to one of the remaining three, which is either choice B or C or E. I am going to evaluate for statement 2 alone. Let me check out whether statement 2 alone will be sufficient to answer the question. We have X is less than 1. When X is less than 1, let's check out which all intervals we need to look at and which all border points we need to look at and see how it turns out to be. When x is less than 1, let me start with the lowest set of numbers, x lying between minus infinity and minus 1. Okay. Recollect the intervals I have told you. I am going to look at this. I am going to look at x is equal to minus 2. When x is equal to minus 2, x cube being an odd power of a negative number is going to be negative. x square, which is an even power of a negative number, is going to be positive. So x cube will be less than x square. The answer to the question is a no. The second interval, this is the first interval. The second interval that I am going to look at is basically a borderline value, which is when x is equal to minus 1. And in this case, when x is equal to minus 1, x cube is minus 1, x square is plus 1. So x cube is less than x square. The answer to the question is still a no. The third one that I am going to look at is basically x lying between minus 1 and 0 x lies between minus 1 and 0. I'm going to take x is equal to minus half. When I take x is equal to minus half, minus 1 by 2 raised to the power of 3 is going to be minus 1 by 8. Minus 1 by 2 raised to the power of 2 square is actually 1 by 4, which is a positive number. In this case also, the answer to the question is a no. <clears throat> in fact, what I will do is, I'll basically, if I'm doing this in the examination, I would look at all these three intervals as primarily negative numbers because we are comparing an odd power of x with an even power of x. So you can club these three and need not look at these three as three different intervals. Negative numbers are what we have. Negative number raised to an odd power is going to be less than negative number raised to an even power. I will just finish these three intervals in one lot. Now let's look at the next set of values which are positive values. Right? I'm going to, before I go into the positive value, I'll have to look at one case which is when x is equal to 0, which is again a borderline case. When x is equal to 0, x cube is 0, x square is also 0, x cube is equal to x square, the answer is still a no. And the last one is x lies between 0 and 1. Please check out whether it's going to hold good here too. x is equal to half, x is equal to half, half cube is 1 by 8, half square is 1 by 4. As we checked out with statement 1, in this case x cube is going to be less than x square. The answer to the question is still a no. Recollect what you have done. In the first three conditions that we looked at, negative numbers raised to an odd power will obviously be less than negative number raised to an even power. So those three gave us an answer which is a uniform no. 
we got a uniform loop with the fourth and the fifth one too. So when x is less than 1, is x cubed greater than x square? We got a uniform no as an answer. So statement 2 is definitely sufficient to answer the question. Right. We'll quickly summarize this in the next slide. Following intervals need to be evaluated. The first one, here I'm doing it in the other way around. x lies between 0 and 1 x lies between 0 and 1, x cube is less than x square, the answer to the question is no. We tried with an example which is x is equal to half. Next border line is when x is equal to 0, x cube will be equal to x square because both are 0, the answer to the question is still a no. The third one, I am clubbing all of these as I said, x is less than 0, negative numbers, x cube will be less than x square, the answer to the question is still a no. Uniform, no, no, no. And we don't have any other intervals to evaluate here. So statement 2 gives us a conclusive, definite answer. So the answer to this question is basically the data is sufficient. Right? Let's find out what the final answer is. We got statement 1, not sufficient. Statement 2, alone is sufficient to answer the question. Statement 1 is not sufficient. Statement 2, alone is sufficient. The answer to this question is basically B. 2 alone is sufficient, 1 is not. Right? If you're looking for additional questions, on data sufficiency, on inequalities, hard math questions, visit our website www.q-51.com. It's a 4G mat initiative. If you like this question, forward this link to your friends, share it with your friends. If you have any comments or suggestions about this video, kindly contact us at info at 4gmat.com. Best wishes for your GMAT.